prophetic word was this. I got to share that. Yeah. Bo, you will pinch yourself in June because you won't believe what came your or our way. That's what's coming. Trump shall become a trumpet, says the Lord. No, you didn't hear me. Trump shall become a trumpet. Are you listening to me? I will raise up the Trump to become a trumpet. You will be a praying president, not a religious one. But I will fool the people, says the Lord. I will fool the people. Yes, I will. God says, the one that is chosen shall go in and they shall say he has hot blood for the spirit of god says yes he may have hot blood but he will bring the walls of protection on this country in a greater way and the economy of this country shall change rapidly says the lord of hosts listen to the word of the lord god says i will put at your helm for two terms a president that will pray but he will not be a praying president when he starts i will put him in office and then i will baptize him with the holy spirit and my power says the lord of hope. now god says a president that i will bring into the white house and they will say he is ungodly he does not know god but ah, ah even as jesus disguised himself for the great feast so i have disguised this man's heart and when he comes to the white house not only shall he be mine, but he shall pray as a man that has never prayed in the White House. Is anybody excited about this? That same man, that same man says the Spirit of God shall put his feet onto this platform. And God says they will say, how did this take place? Laws shall change. Young men and young women shall have access into the kingdom and with authority into politics and with authority into the industries that now have been controlled by darkness because of this man that shall rule for another two terms for two terms god said do not fear for the lord says there will be no unnecessary unnecessary stuff but there will be things that men shall question fear not for you shall sit in that seat and suddenly my spirit shall come upon him and baptize him with a fire and with anointing says the spirit of the lord come on no more war no more war praise the lord praise the lord come on bo say it with us come on nathan these are glory days and not gloomy days god bless you this is the day the lord has made and we will rejoice um, and be glad to be in it i'm so happy to be here today and glorious california we done kidnapped nathan for one week uh you know they're already missing him in washington He's getting caught. Where are you? Well, we can get you home soon. I mean, <laughs> we're just having a good time. I've had him for a few days, uh, a handful of days. And, you know, both going to get him for a few days. I mean, it's just like, I mean, he's just getting pulled around. He's just getting pulled around. <laughs> Everybody wants their share of Nathan. He's full of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so this is a, a wonderful time, and bro Brother Bo, thank you for coming on. And you know, um, you know, we just got to going to have an exciting uh, live stream, and we just want you to know how much God loves you. Go ahead, Nathan. Well, I, I got to say, this is the most exciting time to be alive on the planet. That's something that we all three agree on. Uh, you know, there's so many great things happening, depending on the source of your news. Uh, you're either depressed and fearful or you're excited and expectant. And I feel like God's saying, just watch what I'm about to release on the earth. Just watch what I've prepared for you who Come have on. been in obscurity. Come on. Just wait because I will fulfill the purpose of my promise, says God. And you will see what I said that I would do come to pass very, very quickly as I'm beginning to shake the foundations of religiosity, as I'm about to put things in order in government, as I'm about to take back my schools. Hey, oh, I feel like the Lord's saying, and I'm going to release 
the fire of heaven to burn up the chaff and to destroy the resistance that has not allowed me to be the Lord of hosts in my creation. And you will see a great turning over of the tables of those who thought that they were smarter than me, says God. And I will restore all who will come to me as the healer, as the savior, as the deliverer, and as the one who promises to give you, my children who walk by my spirit and who live according to my purpose and will, recompense, which means I will repay you. This is the word of the Lord. Mm -mm. Nate, go ahead. Give us a te- uh, listen. Bo, give us a teaser. Give us a teaser. <laughs> How do you top that one? It's always funny when you hang out with Nathan. It's like you never know what's going to come out of come out of the Lord's mouth. And boy, I'll tell you one thing: Lord uses Nathan so powerfully. It is truly, truly a, a blessing um, to to have to be here with Nathan. And Nathan, thank you for being in California. It's been a pleasure seeing you. Next week starts spring i wanted to play this video um for us manny if, if this would work Go right ahead let me see if we can share this screen here check this out let me let me put this on it's like a one minute video and it talks about spring here let, listen to this together sound like Kim. Was that Kim Walker? That was anointed. Yes, wow. she actually, that prophecy came upon her as she was on stage singing. That mm. was uh, that was like, ten, like a week ago. I want to lead people in a in just a quick prayer because it's so important that we are filled to overflowing with the Holy Ghost. There's nothing better than being filled to overflowing with the Holy Ghost. He's the comforter, the counselor, the healer, the built-in teacher. Christ is in us as the hope of glory. And he wants to speak to every person. It's so much easier to hear him when you're full of him. And so you can actually just recognize the be being filled means continually fill up on the spirit of God. And so if you need more of God, maybe you're going through something that's causing you to fear, God wants to settle that right now. And he wants to love you in a way that, that you can go deeper in him. And sometimes it's simple as just praying a prayer. So pray this with me. Um, We were just having lunch. Somebody treated us to a nice lunch. The Lord had me prophesy over the waitress. I got a word of knowledge um, about her pain in her body. Mm. And sure enough, she had pain, but there was no way for us to tell that in the natural. You know, that woman, she had a tear in her eye as I reached out, grabbed her hand and prayed for her. She got filled with the Holy Ghost. She surrendered her life fully to Christ. She forgave herself. She forgave gave others. And my goodness, she got lit up by the fire of God. You know, you can be touched right where you are at any given time. If you ever feel depleted, you can just pray this prayer and lead your family members in this prayer before you start talking theology or who thinks what or, you know, what's, you know, so just pray this with me. Just say, say this, say, Jesus, I receive you fully. Go ahead. Jesus, I receive you fully. And I surrender to you completely. Mm. Have your way in me. I want to do what you say. Help me hear your voice. Fill me now. Say that. Say, fill me now to overflowing with your Holy Spirit. And baptize me in your passion and your fire and by your Holy Spirit. I repent and confess any sin known or unknown, and I ask you to wash me, and I forgive myself and those who hurt me in Jesus' name. Now I command any pain or any sickness or any disease to get out of your Holy Spirit-filled body, and I say you are healed by his stripes in Jesus' name. Whoa! Receive it. Amen. I know you received it right now. You know what? 
I I feel that there's people that are watching us from England. And just just real quick, show us, tell us where you're watching us from. We we want to acknowledge you. We want to engage. We want to bless you. We want to bless you. Come on, just bring it up right now. Show us where you are watching us from, whatever parts of the world, uh, whatever state. It doesn't matter. Remember, remember, let's not be ashamed of your game. Come on, just show where you're watching us. Uh, come on, because we're. I'm going to be honest. We're from California, Washington. All righty. And uh, Bo, you know, Irvine, California, or, or, or Orange County, California. Uh, he just, I just know he's from that part. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look, what do we got here? We have, uh, oh, you're bringing him up. He got New Jersey. Wait a minute. Boy, you guys are bringing it up here. Wow, Indiana. Look at that. You, you look, uh, well, yeah, uh, Florida. Natives, Florida. Look Colorado. at Las Vegas. Uh, look at this. Come on, bring it up. Watching from, oh, you guys are bringing fast. There's England. London, London. Yeah, London. I knew England. it. There it is. Look at that. Come on. We're watching Washington State, uh, Indiana. Glory Southern to Cal, God. Arkansas. That's right. We Michigan, bless you. Michigan. England. Come on. Anybody There's watching? England. England, England, another England. Is anybody watching from Washington State where book where Nathan, Nathan lives? He wants to know. He wants to know if there's somebody Where's following. Washington him. Beach. Come on, come on, guys. <laughs> don't embarrass him. Washington, <laughs> don't embarrass him. All right, we can't send him back. You know, with his head down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking up to the hills, bro. All right, that's right. Look it up. All right, he's looking up to the hills. Where my help comes from. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> but right now, a little help from Washington. Come on. <laughs> the Lord, where where's all the come? Washington people? Come on. There's Listen, Arizona. Come on. We need somebody from Washington. I know there's got to be some people here from Washington. Yeah, share the post, everybody, so we can. There it is. There you go. Hey, we hey. Got, oh, there it is. Are you a uh, Do you come on? Do you um? Calisbury. Cal you, what is that? Well, you know what? I don't know. I don't know where Calisbury is. Okay. Listen, Cal's is that Calisbury? <laughs> uh that's your name or is that the state? Come on, send it. must be the place in, in Washington. In Washington. Yeah, All yeah. right. Do you follow Nathan Friends? Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you're following him, you gotta have some joy. You can't turn him off without <laughs> you know, something's gonna happen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, you know, some people will laugh themselves out of their chains. I've seen it. Like I've seen people come into our meetings and they're they're sad and they leave glad. I've seen people come oppressed and like you get decompressed. I've seen people like literally under heaviness keep and going. get broken out of that. Come on, keep so on. even while you're watching, if you feel the spark of the Holy Ghost, uh, you should know that God's actually healing you right now. Come on. And some of you are worried about stuff that's outside your control and it does no good to do that. Instead, just begin to thank God that he's in charge of many things, but he's delegated that authority to us. Germany. So, um, yo, Germany. Germany. Yeah, sehr gut. Yeah, wo wohnst du denn auf Deutschland? Yeah. <laughs> That oh, do. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i speak a little german you know what though you need to know that god delegated authority he said all authority was given to christ now christ jumped in us by as the hope of glory so that we can delegate judicially things on the earth and cause things to New take Zealand. place even the power of our tongue our saying and our praying mm. our believing mm. uh, sets it up to be able to be seen and so there's some incredible things happening on the earth and so if you're not excited now you will be by the time you're finished watching this broadcast uh, Whoa! And, and, oh i feel like come god on, Bo, come, come on, on Bo. come on Bo. Take, say come something because you got something right no, no. Right now. well i just i don't want to say this listen i just love listening it's like when the three of us get together you know it's really fun to listen to what manny has to say we just have to say because we're always like these are glory days right it's always the excitement and happiness that's what it's all about and and it's so fun to listen to Nathan speak because when you speak, Nathan, as well, it's like, you know, the joy of the Lord, right? And, and it's true. When you're laughing, when you're smiling, it's those are things of God, period. God is joy and joy unspeakable. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you know, in the in the Bible, it says in the presence of God is fullness of joy. 
and full joy brings laughter that works like a medicine and the medicine delivers healing. So in effect, people who are in faith instead of fear, because fear restricts and causes people to get bottled up and to become joyless. Whereas if you're in faith, you'll naturally <coughs> sl slide right into the arms of the father Come on. and recognize everything's going to be okay. Everything's that Jesus loves okay. me and his perfect love drives out the spirit of fear that he didn't give us. And when you're in faith instead of fear and you're receiving his love, you start seeing what you've been hoping for. So faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. Faith worketh by love. And it's all about love. So when, when you think about what's the main thing, it's love. If we have not love, we're nothing. But he said, love is the greatest of these. Mm. And so just be in love with the one who first loved you. And then you'll start being used of God in a powerful way to deliver love that will be the antidote for the fear around you. Mm. Say, come on, how many of you receive that? Come on, say, I receive that. I receive that. Love that shirt, Nathan. Come on. Oh, oh thank come you. On, show yeah, it, show it off. off. Show it off. See, I'm wearing the Great Commission. Show it off. I'm wearing the Great Commission. This is what God said. He didn't say it's a suggestion. He said it's the Great Commission. That means go forth and therefore do this, right? He said, send them out two by two. He said, they healed the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead. Freely you've received, freely give. What is, what's he saying? He's saying, go forth and do what Jesus taught us would be normal for anyone who believes these signs will follow. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. They'll cast out demons in my name. You know, so when you pray, you should know that your prayers are very powerful because the Bible says that we, you, are the righteousness of God. And the prayers of the righteous prevail much and are highly effective. So yeah, I'm wearing this shirt because it reminds me that I have a part to play, that Jesus didn't just do it all uh, for us uh, so that we would sit back and receive. No, he actually did it all to give us life and godliness. And he sent them out two by two. And even today, uh, you know, we're not meant to be religious and knock every door. But if God says, go knock on the third door on the right, and you're a spirit filled, believing believer, then you ought to do that. Because there's so many times he'll tell me, he'll say, pull over right here. Well, you know, one day he told me, he said, pray for that man. I prayed for a man. His Achilles heel got healed and he was so surprised. He goes, I want to do something for God now. And I go, what do you want to do for God? He goes, I don't know. Ask the Lord what we could do for him. And I go, okay. And you know what the Lord said? I heard the Lord say, there is a woman. She is lonely. She just had a fight with her guy. She's in, she's in her house and she doesn't have money to buy groceries. And I want you to go to the store and I want you to buy the groceries and deliver it to the woman. So I told my friend this and he's like, are you kidding me? Cause like, what, well, how are we going to find her? I said, well, God could tell me all that. Then he knows where she lives. So we went to the store and we filled two heaping grocery carts full of food, probably six, seven hundred dollars worth of food. Wow. And I said, Lord, wow. tell me where the woman is. And he said she lives on a hill and he described everything to a T. So we get in the vehicle with all these groceries and I'm telling my friend, like I'm teaching him actually how to hear God and follow the spirit. So we go up to this next street and God says, go right. And then the Lord says, go to the next light and go left. And we went left. And he said, the second house right here on the right hand side. And it was a, it was a, a house on a hill, just like what God had spoke to me. And so we, I knock on the door and I try to make myself look small because I'm kind of a big guy. And I, I knock on the door and I said, ma'am, I'm sorry to bother you, but my name is Nathan and God told me to knock on your door. Can I ask you a question? Have you been feeling lonely? You had a blowout with your, your boyfriend? She's like, how did you know that? And I said, I felt like God so I said I'm supposed to bless you. So we went to the store. We bought a bunch of food items. And I felt like he said just to follow his spirit. And he led me to your door. She goes, oh, my gosh. I was just telling my girlfriend that I just ran out of food. I'm a little tight on money. And I said, is it okay if we bless you, ma'am? I know this is random. I've never done this before personally. I said, but, it, you know, if I could just you know, bring the groceries up and bless you. And she goes, yes, please bring them. She's in tears because God heard her prayer. All of a sudden she realizes she's not alone. All of a sudden she realized God's for her and not against her. She, she hugged on us. She loved on us. We loved on her. She has tears streaming down her cheeks. I wish I'd have had it on film, but it would have been intrusive. All I know is Jesus touched that woman that day just because we were willing to ask God a question. Who do you want to bless? And he led us to a door and that lady's life was changed. She got full of the Holy Ghost. She repented and confessed all her sins. She even confessed the sin of fear. 
And, um, and, and man, that lady, I watched the transformation occur. So what if we would just allow God to use us, each one of us, just by looking for random opportunities to bring God's goodness and kindness to the people around us? Remember, it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. One thing I really realized that is really truly apparent is you don't need all the steps. You know, we go through life, you know, we're, we're not going to do anything until, like, people think in their head, we're not going to do it. I'm not going to do anything until I have all the steps figured out. And what Nathan's really saying here is that you don't need all the steps. You just need the first step. You take that first step and God will give you the next step. And if, listen to his story. Go back and listen to it. There, He didn't have all the steps. He just heard the first step and he was obedient to the first step. That's the critical thing. When I hear things as well, too. I don't have all the knowledge or information, but I hear a piece of information, so I, I start with that. And then the more I work, the more I gather information, the more pieces come to life. And that's what life's all about, is never just wait till you have all the answers, because that because then you're frozen in time, and, you, and you're not going to move. You want to move. You want to, because God's fluid. You know, he's life. He's life abundantly. And so you don't need all the answers in life. You just need the first step. And in this, this is where it comes down to, you know, faith. Faith is that first step. So, and and then and when you got joy of the Lord, why not go for it? <laughs> yeah, that's so true, Bo. I love what you said. And and you're right. God told me, he said, you want to live in the power of rest. You know how you stay in the rest? It's not so much the day is it's about you staying in a position of recognizing that the, that the Lord actually gives us rest from our trust. Mm -hmm. So it's when we're trusting God that we're resting in God. And when we're mm -hmm. resting in God, there's power and learning to live in the moment with Jesus actually causes his power to transfer to us and then through us. So it's the yield that brings the yield. It's the trust that gives you the ability to uh, let him lead you. And my goodness, God can show up and he can transform any person in a moment when they're willing to just let him be the Lord of all. And so don't just incorporate God, but actually let him become your life. And there's nothing he wouldn't do for you as long as there's nothing that you wouldn't do for him. And so that's my encouragement. Stay in the beauty of the moment. It's the gift of the present instead of the worries of tomorrow. And you'll st start to learn to enjoy the Lord and tap into the great adventure. Wow. Nathan, how, how, okay. they want to know how they can get a hold of you. Okay, so you can find me at NathanFrenchMinistries.com. Um, you can write this down. There's a few places. We do events called Awaken the Planet. Dot com. Uh, we also have um, events through the Rock Revival Center dot com. That's our revival yes. hub. Um, so, yeah, that's my personal website. You can invite me to speak at your church and venue. Um, also, I have a special offer. If you guys want to learn to hear the voice of God, let me send you my whole book series for free um, just for signing up today on the broadcast. You can go on the website, NathanFrenchMinistries.com. You sign up. You can partner with the ministry and help us go out to the heart and you'll get the books um, sent to you by our team. And so if you're if you're learning to hear God's voice, that's an incredible thing. If you don't know how to hear God's voice, um, it's really important you find out what blocks the spiritual ears, uh, what opens the spiritual ears. When the ear blockers get out of the way, like pride or or unbelief, uh, you know, whatever the spirit is that's trying to keep people from hearing God, when you understand what Jesus the Word says, you'll begin to learn to hear his voice. And just having a heart that's willing to do whatever the Lord says will actually cause you to begin to um prosper in an unusual way. And that's what I love about hearing God is he actually wants to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, if you call to him, then he will answer. So it's a promise that if you call to him, most people don't call to God unless they're lost. But if you start to call to God when you're not lost, you'll start hearing his voice. So be sure you go and get your copies of the books. Here they are right here. If you want to see what they what they look like, um, this is the the... First one is this one. It's not meant to be a secret. Um, this will be sent to you. This one also, uh, rushing the floodgates of heaven. Uh, go pick this up. And then one is the power of unity. But all these books are designed 
to unlock your spiritual ears so that you can hear what the Lord is saying. So go get those at NathanBrenchMinistries.com. Uh, sign up for the special offer. You can partner with the ministry and help us to go after the massive harvest. Uh, we'll be doing crusades coming up in Uganda, Africa. Um, crusades coming up. We'll be doing Awaken the Planet events um, also all over the, the nations. Awaken the Planet events will start popping up. We've done like four major uh, Unity for the Harvest events in the last four years, three, four years. We try to do one big stadium event every year. It does cost quite a bit. Uh, we're restoring, though, a school that we purchased so we could use that uh, as a revival center and hub. So thanks for praying for us. Uh, thanks for partnering with the ministry. And then Bo, Bo's back. Come on, Bo! Bo, 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 Bo. Uh, I just speaking of books, uh, I... My, I had a publicist working with, with me for the past six months and all my data for the past two years, we jam packed into this book. And it's crazy because this is a funny story. So this is a Christian publicist that's putting this whole book together since we're talking about books. And so she's, you know, when I was a child, she was saying when I was a kid and we've always read Revelation, we always, I like, think it's, you know, scary, like go read Revelation. There's nothing enjoyable about reading Revelation. And by the time the whole week went by, we went through all the data and I explained how God revealed all the timelines, patterns into the future and how revelations laid out because what is Re what's the Bible? It's the good news. And then so is revelation. At the end of the meeting, she could not believe how exciting things are looking for 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 us as the bride as a bride of Christ. So, you know, so the, the book we're supposed to be taking live, I believe, next week on pre-sales, but really exciting, you know, how God is using all of us. And it's like even today, the fact that all three of us are together doing this podcast. What what a blessing uh, to, to the bride of Christ. Wow. Talk to us, Bo. What's coming up in the next few months here? Right. So um, this is a very powerful time point, um, as I've shown before in, in, the, in the calendars. There's that Kim Clement prophecy. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but I played on my channel before. I think we played it last time. The Kim Clement actually stated what happened was, this, you know, Satan, he's the deceiver. So what he wants to do is have us miss God's appointments. Like it only makes sense because he's a deceiver. He'll lie. Satan will lie about every single thing he possibly can, including mm -hmm. missing, changing the clocks. Like if God did, if Satan didn't just twist the clocks up, people would have actually known Jesus was on the earth, but Satan twisted the clocks so that people would miss Jesus's appointment on the earth. And so Christ is coming back again and Satan's messing with the clocks. So understand the calendar that we use, you know, you look, you could, you look at your calendar and we all think we're in 2024 as of last, as of January, but it's an impossibility because the number Ds in Roman numerals is 10. Oct is eight. January is the 11th month. February is the 12th month. We're stepping into new years right now. So we're supposed to be starting New Year's this month. So this is the calendar for New Year's. Today's the 15th. We just started. Yesterday would have been on the Advent calendar, the start of the New Year. And this could literally, and the next week, next week starts the 20th, which is spring. So all I know is that something biblical is about to manifest here on this earth because we're starting 2024. And then we've got the so, and if we're and this is Exodus twelve two, it says you start counting. So think about the, what God revealed to me. If we start counting as of yesterday, Exodus twelve two. If you Exodus twelve three says on the tenth day, that's next Saturday, Sunday. Manny, Nathan, next Sunday would be Purim. Well, think about this. So do you think when Trump married Melania, they actually calculated from this coming weekend, next next weekend, backwards to the wedding date? Because you realize from the, the date they got married to this Purim next weekend, he was, he's was he been married to Melania 7,000 days to the exact day. I'm going to repeat that. Trump is married to Melania 7,000 days to the exact day. He married her on January 20th, the exact same day, but 32 years earlier was the exact time of Roe v. Wade became law on January 20th. 7,000 days precisely is this Purim coming up, and only 
the three days before that is spring. I don't know if you've ever heard that prophecy um, of Kent Christmas about uh, seven days from now. So he gave the prophecy on right here. It was September. It was March nineteenth last year, and he said seven days from now. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean twenty twenty three. It means seven days from the date March fourteenth. Okay, because there was no year given in that prophecy. But think about what this prophecy was. He, God stated through Kent Christmas. Seven days from March 19th, I will strike a mortal wound to the enemy that the enemy will not be able to recover from. Yeah. Do you have that clip? Yeah, I've got it here if you want to listen to it. It's, it's, Can you bring it up? Yeah, let's. this is, this is crazy. I, that, that, I want the saints to hear that clip again. Yeah, yeah I think Let we me. should play it, too. He said in the next seven days. I'm going to hit a mortal wound to the enemy in the United States of America. And he says, as men have said, March winds and April showers, God said there is a wind of the Lord getting ready to hit this coming week in the United States of America <clears throat> that is going to astound people it's going to mortally wound the enemy. Hallelujah. And it is setting the stage, says the Lord, for the month of April. God says, I'm opening heaven upon the church and upon this nation. And there is going to be a rain of the blessing and the favor of the Lord. I asked the Lord, I said... What is this mortal wound? God said, I ain't telling you that. He said, I just need you to tell them, get ready, because in this next week, you're going to see something happen uh, that's going to be reported uh, in the nation that God is going to begin to do something supernatural by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Mm. Amen. We've been having great wind. Great wind here a in California. Yes, yeah. there was a. He had his a cover on a classic uh, truck that was, you know, donated to him, and and uh, you know, and that that thing that cover had never come off, had it? It never came. It off. never came off, and he didn't have it fastened down. It was just sitting on top around this classic, and the thing, and the wind just blew off this thing. We had to go out and put the cover back on the vehicle, and then strap it down. Uh, it was unusual wind, just as he said. So. It was unusual when this was yesterday. Yeah, and the Lord always sends a mighty rushing wind when he's about to do something again. And I, I spoke this, I was speaking at uh, Tommy Barnett's church in Phoenix. This was months ago uh, at uh, Dream City Church there. And uh, I had prophesied that night while I was ministering uh, there. I, I said, God says, I'm sending a mighty rushing wind again. And I said it again. I said, and the Lord says, I am sending a mighty rushing wind again. And I said, and it begins tonight. Okay, so that's specific. And all of a sudden, bro, Bo, this is amazing. All of a sudden, that evening, a mighty rushing wind. It was a fluke. It wasn't predicted. None of us expected it. I mean, until that word was released. But here, the winds began to blow in such a way that all of the palm trees, all the dead branches were just being thrown down on people's cars. Mm. Um, hopefully, nobody had cars that were damaged. But we had these tree branches falling all over the Phoenix area. And I said, Lord, what is up with this? You did send a mighty rushing wind. And he says, yeah. And then I heard him say, every branch that does not bear good fruit will be cast down and thrown into the fire. The Lord's saying, be fruitful and multiply and build your house on Jesus, who is the rock. Don't build on the sand of your own plan, but actually begin to understand God's ways, his timelines, his seasons, what he wants, and then just come into agreement with that. 
and let God send the mighty rushing wind again. If you don't, if you don't have enough fire on you, listen, everybody has a flame. When Pentecost had fully come, everyone received a flame. They weren't standing around saying, I like your flame better. Your flame's a blue flame and mine's a red flame and his is an orange flame. No, you just get a flame and then the Lord sends the wind. And then what happens if you breathe on the flame? It starts to expand and accelerate. And my God is a consuming fire. The Bible says that he'll baptize by water and by fire mm. and the fire is attracted to the mm. sacrifice mm. which is us presenting our lives as a living sacrifice holy acceptable and pleasing unto god this is our reasonable service and when the winds blow upon a person who has a flame that flame gets bigger and brighter and hotter uh you know if you're trying to fly a kite and there's no wind it's not going to get any altitude you've got to be submitted to god and the greater you yield the greater that wind will be able to take you up into destiny as we humble ourselves. He will lift us up. Saints, hey, man. listen to me. Listen, I, to, come on, Savior. So I receive true. that. I Saints, receive don't that. you know that God wants to take you places that you have never been? He wants to show you things that you have never seen, tell you things that you have never heard. You need, He wants you to he, believe me. That's why he said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Uh -huh. And I've tasted it. And believe me, that was just the appetizer. <laughs> God, the Lord told me, I'm just getting started, my son. I'm just getting started. It is fun to wake up and go to bed knowing that I'm on the side that wins. All right, don't worry about what you're seeing, all this little, uh, uh, what they call a Triple, triple this and triple that and, and thumping and all that. That's because the media knights don't know what they're doing. So you have to understand that we're on the side that wins. We, we got the sword of the Lord. Let me say, it's like, think about it, like all the bad news, right? Like, we're not, with the three of us hang out together, or, you know, we've had it several times. We've been just, you know, the past few days, we're hanging out and all we do is laugh all day. Like, <laughs> all we do is laugh all day. Why? What's there to be sad about? You see, we don't turn on the news. There's nothing to there's nothing to watch in the news. Nothing to watch in the news because the news is the Bible. Because it's already written. The reason I'm smiling all the time is because God reveals things to me and I laugh. It's so funny because the math, his math is so perfect, it freaks me out. The latest on the map. So from the eclipse on april 8th we talked about seven seven months to the exact seven months to the exact day seven months to the exact day is the election how does this stuff work out then 40 days and 40 nights from 40 days and 40 nights precisely from april 8th eclipse is guess what Pentecost. There it is. Pentecost. How does this happen? How you can't make that up. It's seven days after resurrection. It's seven years apart. Seven cities called Salem, which is Hebrew for peace. Seven cities of Nineveh. And exactly seven months before the U.S. presidential election to the exact day. How do you make all this stuff up? You can't, but it's happening right in front of us. Now, I wanted to play this prophecy for you because I think this is going to be pretty exciting to, to watch us because guess what's about to be opened? Guess what God's about to give us? The key to David. So let me play this prophecy here. The Spirit of the Lord says... There's a key that I have God says I'm giving you the key To open up the treasure I'm giving you a key to 
He held back the spirit of death. God says, I'm giving you the power to hold back the spirit of death. I'm aligning you right now. I'm aligning you right now. It's not quite there yet, says the Spirit of God. But I want to align you. That what is happening in heaven right now begins to transpire and come into this house. That my will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. There is only one clock. Now I'm aligning you, says the Spirit of God. Do not take this lightly. You are aligned now. You are perfectly aligned now. Now, Spirit of God, come upon your people right now. Come on. Something is open in heaven that has not yet been opened in this nation. God says, I have placed you at the right place, at the right time, for the right reason, at the right season. And now there will be a death of death. Wow, that's beautiful. Whoa! Listen, the saints are seeing this, and we, they're getting stirred up in the spirit, like we're getting stirred up. Saints, I want to say something. And I usually say it at events, but I'm going to say it now. It's wonderful. When you've been walking with the Lord, you see, it's all about helping each other. Love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. All lives matter from the womb to the tomb. Yeah. Amen. I want to make sure that statement... All lives matter mm -hmm. from the wound to the tomb. And it will never, God will never change on that. Because every one of us, you and I, are wonderfully and fearfully made. And I believe there's some people out there that have been having some identity issues going on. 
And God didn't make a mistake on the time you were born, the day yeah. you were born, and why you were born. Mm -hmm. There was no mistake. There was never a mistake. He knew us before we were even formed in our mother's womb. It doesn't matter what man or woman say. It's there is a watching us right now. When you look in the mirror, you say, Lord, I thank you because I am wonderfully and fearfully made. You look in the mirror and say, Lord, I bless my body that you gave me. And I thank you for my future glorified body. It has nothing to do with any nationality, your religion or whatever. God knew you. He loves you and he knows the hairs of your hair. He counts them. I can't count them, but he counts them. You know, that's how much he cares for you. Go ahead, Brother Bo. Yeah, no, just go back and listen to that prophecy. What was he saying, right? We've think about this. So we've got Purim. Think about if God's going to do something from a biblical perspective, God's always moved historically. Study the scriptures, He moves on His times and His seasons. He's not going to move randomly. So we don't know the day God's going to strike here or do something, but we do know, you know, we biblically, we got the event of Purim. That was a huge time point in Jewish history because in 24 hours, Haman's hanging on his hangman or hangman, sorry, I got a hangman from, but Haman's hanging on his own gallows in 24 hours, right? You've got the, you got the events of the angel of death. That was at Passover. We're heading into Passover now, are we not? Right? So you got, I said, you, got this Purim, is you got Passover. You got spring equinox next week. We got the prophecy I just showed you, the girl singing, lady singing. What is yes, she right. saying? You know, that God's going to fulfill his word. It only would make sense that he's going to do things in his seasons. They're not my seasons. They're not your seasons. They're God's seasons. And season is, and spring is a time of birth. It's a birthing. Well, we're waiting for the birth of what? This is critical. What are we waiting for? The birth of a new era. You heard it. See, Nathan and I said it at the same time because God said it to both of us at the same time. We're waiting for the birth of a new era. And this I'm going to echo all it. Of era. Babylon, era. All of it. All of Babylon and the birth of God's new kingdom. This is the kingdom economy that Manny's been speaking about. Because when the era is birthed, God's finances are birthed. This is why you're going to get death to debts. Because the debt system is a slavery system of Babylon. We're not going to. So that death system of slavery dies just like what happened at the Red Sea and Pharaoh in Israel. And we're, so we're that's that's going to be dead. And we're that's why death to debt. And we're going to see the, the birthing of a new era in Witten. Spring. Yep. Where we're springing forth. And, you know, uh, Bo, I love what you're talking about because I think there's a lot of people watching right now mm -hmm. that are really trying to figure out how do I break out of the earth curse system or the debt cycle? Because pro many people are programmed, you know, to buy it now and pay for it later. Uh, so that the average family has a lot of credit card debt. They're leveraging. They're borrowing for Peter to pay Paul. Uh, they feel a little bit like they're coming under it. And how am I going to get my head above it? And the Bible says that we're with the head. And we're not meant to be the tail being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. So there's something about where you have to understand God's economy. You have to understand the ways of God. The kingdom is at hand. And we have to be able to think like he thinks. And so debt cancellation is part of his plan. He all, he wants to forgive debts just like he gave us forgiveness. Mm -hmm. That's his way. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't do any good for him to wipe it out if we're going to go jump right back into it. So it's, it's important to start learning the principles of God with sowing and reaping. It's really important to understand 
uh, you know, what God is saying to you individually, because one of the ways that I broke out of the cycle of debt and one of the ways that I've been seeing God's favor and grace abound in my life is I started giving my way out. Right. I, I mean, I literally started to sow when I didn't have enough to pay my bills because I knew what, what I had in my hand. If it wasn't meeting my need, it's not my breakthrough. It must be my seed. And so I actually started to learn to be a sower and a mm. cheerful giver. So I would start investing investing in ministries where I saw the Holy Ghost, where I saw the fruit of the Spirit, where I saw the gifts in operation, where I saw that there was a yielded heart or vessel. And I started to honor that. And when I did that, when I started honoring these various ministries, I actually connected to a grace that was on them. And I started seeing that grace come on the people who helped us. So, you know, this is for somebody right now that if you're in your, in, in your life right now, you're feeling a little bit like you're just trying to keep your head above water. You're just trying not to drown. That is not life and life abundant. That's trying to be in survival mode instead of being in a thrive cycle. Come on. And I feel like God's saying, I'm pulling you out of the, the trying to survive mode. And I'm bringing you into my thrive mode where you're actually going to begin to uh, work with me, the head, so that you are no longer the tail. And instead of coming um, under this oppressiveness that, that comes from defeat and deplete, I'm bringing you into my super abundance. And as a righteous person, I believe that the Lord is going to transfer the wealth that he laid up from the wicked for the righteous. This is the beginning of a massive transference of wealth. Uh, Bo, I think you agree with this and you, you can weigh in on it, um, but I see the Lord actually literally taking fortunes from those who have earned it deceitfully and through deception well, and wickedness. Transfer. And I see God literally stripping them of that wealth and then putting it into the hands of the people who will actually yield to his voice and do his will. And this is going to begin to happen in a powerful way. So don't just believe God's going to, going to just cancel your debts. I mean, debt freedom is not where it ends. He said, I'll give you houses you didn't build, vineyards you didn't even have to plant. God is expanding the territory of the believing believer right now. And I've been telling people like, I don't know how this is happening. So, so I just know that I've been trusting God. I've been listening for God. I've been hearing God and I've been responding to God. He looks for faith so he can land on it. He wants to reward you in your faithfulness. Some of you feel like, man, I've done what I thought I was supposed to do, but I feel stuck. Listen, it's an illusion that you're stuck. Stay faithful. Keep doing what God's saying and keep moving in a mindset that you serve a miraculous God that in one moment he could decide to cause all grace to abound in you and release favor. The other day I had asked God for some uh, land. I, I wanted to own some property in mining country. And this woman just called me out of the blue and says, Nathan, I was wondering if you might want to go see, uh, you know, our, our family cabin. It's a log home. It has a wood stove. It's up in uh, mining country in Liberty. And I, I said, well, you know, dad, do you want to go look at it? He said, well, I think it'd be interesting. And they talked to my dad. And, and so I said, dad, did, did she say she's going to give me this log mm. cabin? And dad says, no, she didn't say she's going to give it to you. And I said, I felt like God said that he's going to give me this cabin. I said, we should go look at it. So we went and looked at this cabin, I said how cool it was. I told my dad, I said, this is amazing. Let's tell her how much we like it. I called the lady and I said, wow, we really love your family cabin. It's, it's such a cool spot up on the mountain. And I said, you know what? Um, what do you plan to do with it? She goes, God told me that I'm supposed to give it to you. And I wanted to see first if you would be willing to go look at it. And if you liked it, I had already decided I'm going to donate it to you. And we received acreage with a log cabin and a wood stove up in minor country so we can find gold on our own property. Right. And you know, I'm just I excited about this. That's God giving you houses you didn't build, vineyards you didn't plant. I mean, we bought a house and there's a vineyard. It's happening right now on the earth and it's for you. I believe the winds are changing. I believe things are turning. And saints, I'm gonna tell you something and I'm, I'm gonna get back because I want to hear what Bo has to say. I'm, how many received that word? How many received receive that word? You know, God got me out of debt in one year. I had school loans. I had loans, car notes. I had everything. You name it, I had it. Credit card. And the system is not meant for me to pay it off 
in one day or one year. It's meant for me to drag it on, drag it on, interest with all this interest. And and Brother Bo and, and Nathan and Saints, I would not have paid that for, I had another 12 years at the end, and I would end up paying three times as much as, three or four times as much as what I owed. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know about giving. You didn't know? I didn't know. I was born again Christian, and they didn't teach me about giving in the church I was at. And I was, that was a big misjustice. And as long as Satan could keep it from me, he did. And it was my mother that told me, my son, you've been stealing from God. I go, and it didn't make any sense. And I'm going to tell you something. She told me and showed me the scriptures. And I had a hard time understanding this. And my whole life changed. I made a covenant with God, just like Jacob did. I didn't even know that Jacob had made a covenant. I was still a new Christian. And I made a covenant with God. I said, Lord, if you will get me out of debt in one year. I said, this debt's going to take me years. But if you can do this, if you can get me out of debt in one year. See, he put it in my spirit. And I want money left over after it's done. This happened in January of that year. Many years, many, 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 many years ago. And I said, by December, I want to be out of debt and I want to have money in the bank. I didn't hear an audible voice, but I had peace. The presence of peace came over me. And it didn't make sense in the natural. But when I started to lose my seed instead of eat my seed and i started to loose it and sow it instead of you know eating it i saw a shift and i'm going to tell you this to make a long you know moving forward i saw miraculous things took place god would speak to me and say you see that person i didn't even know him so into him right now he would have me go to a church that i never knew that even existed and said, all the money in your pocket, sow it right now. Sow it. And I was just doing unusual things, but God was doing miraculous things. And I saw things happen. It worked, but there was instructions. And so when God was touching my heart, I was yielding to obedience. And at the end of the year, it was only one week before that year was up. My last debt was paid. I received, there was debt cancellation. There were things that were happening where some kind of way it shrunk. Something happened to where the numbers worked out and they would call and they would say, you don't know us anymore, Mr. Johnson. And I knew in the natural I did, but the record showed that I didn't. So I knew God was working behind the scenes. And I believe that when Nathan said what I'm saying and with Brother Bo is saying, I believe there's a many of you that needed to hear this. I was making him Lord over my life, but not over my treasures. And I realized as long as he's Lord over my treasures, I can't go wrong. And you saints are next. And when you're in debt, believe me, it can make you sick. People are burdened a lot of times because they feel almost disempowered because they know how much is coming and they know how much is going. And they're like just trying to get to a place where they can get into victory. But with God, you can actually learn to tap into a double portion. You know, the double portion is meant that we would enter his rest and then cease from striving. But you have to learn about how to do this. A lot of it is just faith. So I love to read the scripture because it builds my faith. The Lord told me, just like the body of Christ, there's many muscles in the body. And but you, you have to think about each muscle, it, it functions different. And you know what the Lord showed me as a vision. I was preaching the gospel and in one of our Awaken the Planet events, and I said to the Lord, um, Lord, what do you want to show me? Give me something that I've never seen before. He showed me a body. And there was all these different parts, just like many parts make up one body, mm -hmm. like you're a, a different part than I am. We're not going to be all the same and nobody plays the same part. But he showed me different muscle groups. Now, in the Bible, faith is like a muscle and you can build your faith in the category of healing. 
but be really weak in kingdom finance. You could be really big and, and full of faith in an area like that you believe that you can teach and teach well, but you could be really weak in the area of deliverance. So you can actually learn and grow and build up your faith muscle in every single category, it looks weird in the natural. If somebody shows up like Mr. Incredible to the gym and all they ever do is chest and they got these little chicken legs, they don't even want to show their legs because they're chicken legs. Amen. So don't be a chicken, like be brave and go after God and let God begin to shape you as you become strong in every single category. Let your faith grow for miracles. Let your faith grow for kingdom finance and giving. Let your faith grow in the area of, of healings, miracles, deliverance, hearing God's voice. Grow your faith in every category. But remember, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. And that's Jesus. When you learn to tap into hearing God's voice. This is why I'm an author. This is why I write books. I never wanted to be an author, never wanted to write books, never wanted to travel the nations. I was scared to get in front of people. I was so scared to get up in front. I cried the first time I got in front of an audience to share my personal testimony about an attempted suicide and how God saved my life and reached in at my last breath, hooked up to my exhaust pipe of my surfer van mm. in Florida. I wanted to die because I tried living my way. I tried doing it my way. I tried living for myself. I was empty and I thought life wasn't worth living. I tried the church. I didn't see the power of God. I saw hypocrisy and spiritual pride. I said, that's not for me. So then I went into the world and I found it all to be meaningless and empty. And I decided life's not worth living. So now after God saved me, literally stepped in at my last breath, my engine ran out of gas. I'm hooked up to the exhaust pipe. I had a garbage bag over my head, breathing carbon monoxide. I pass out cold seconds from death. My van ran out of gas. It wasn't long I came to. My mind was blown. Some people laid hands on me and said, Nathan, every brain cell that the devil tried to steal, be returned in Jesus name. Mm. And God began to heal my mind and rebuild it with the truth in his word. And I started to read the scripture and I started getting my mind renewed. So I wasn't all over the place, double-minded, unstable in all my ways. Instead, God built me up in the truth. He anchored me in hope. And he said, now I want you to learn to love because that's the greatest of these. When you get to heaven, it's not gonna matter how much you accumulate on the earth. What's really going to matter is, did you learn how to love? That's what God's going to ask you. He said, the greatest of these is love. If you have not love, then you're nothing. Love does. Love's a verb. It's an action. You don't just say, I love you, but not show it. So show love every day. Look for people who are broken because of the absence of love and let that motivate compassion to bring God's love to the people around you and begin to get that perspective that, you know, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You can't even be saved without faith. And mm. remember, faith, it comes by hearing and hearing by Jesus, the word who's alive. And when you hear the word, the living word, Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Christ in you, the hope of glory, all of a sudden you get shielded and protected. What would happen if every one of us was so shielded by the faith that came by hearing what Jesus is saying, that we were safe now and we could be bold as the lions because the Bible says righteous to be bold as lions. And I'm not lying about that. Come on, if you want more of Jesus, you can come before the throne of grace and begin to just say, God, more. I got to have more. I need you, God. Mm -hmm. I don't want to live for me anymore. I'm tired of trying to look like I'm perfect and I'm not. God, we've all sinned and fallen short, but I need you to do something dramatic in my life so that I can be more like you to shine before men as the salt that causes thirst. So thirsty people will drink of the living water, which is the Holy Spirit. And you can do it because you can do all things through Christ. There's nothing that the world can offer us that with the Jesus doesn't supersede all of it. Period. The stories that Nathan told you, these are true. These are incredible stories that he tells you. I, you know, think about this. Someone giving Nathan like land as an example. This is real life. This is happening. Nathan gets, he's got a plane. Wait, the stuff that Nathan, that, that happens in his life is why? Because he walks with God.
period. We're just the witnesses to away. it. I don't have a yeah. plane anymore. And, and this is the best part. Yeah, I didn't say that, but he, gave, he got a plane and he gave it away. People, this is like so simple to understand, but the revelation God gave me was so simple. You know, we've talked about this in prior podcasts, the 5,000 and Jesus. If that little boy didn't show up with the two fish and the five loaves of bread, 5,000 would have gone home hungry. You see, you have to give something for God to work with. So the wealth transfer, understand that it's, it's, there's two things. The wealth transfer is a release from bondage, number one. So God will destroy the banks, the bondage, so the enslavement. You know, the reason people are like, I don't have enough to buy food. Or, the reason you're there is because Satan stole everything from us. Right back in the garden. It was all stolen. God gave it all to us, and then Adam and Eve gave it all away. But we, God knew that was going to happen. Because Jesus was the word. He was at creation. And he agreed to come because he knew man would fall. And mm. now we're watching God came, Christ came. We're 2,000 years later. We're, we're, he's preparing the way. So we know we stated the wealth of the sinner stored up for the righteous. It's written. It's written, and it hasn't happened yet. So if it's written, it hasn't happened yet, it means it's going to happen, period, yep. because God's word doesn't come back fully. That's it right. says also Deuteronomy, where to be head, not the tail. Well, that hasn't happened yet. So there's a second thing of the wealth transfer is God's going to, because energy's not destroyed, it's only transferred. So God's going to take the monies of the rich and transfer it to the righteous, the church. doesn't doesn't say everybody. It says the righteous. Very important to listen to the words. The righteous. Because others will also participate that are in this, you know, that are going to celebrate the wealth transfer, but they're, this will be like the lottery to them. They're going to lose it all. Within one to two years, million, people that win, mil, win millionaire, millionaires from the lotteries, within one to two years, they lose it all. Why? That's true. That's true. Why? Because the same thing. They, they don't know how to manage finance. They're not wise. They're not wise stewards. And the reason many people have gone through these trials and tribulations, that when you do get the freedom from bondage, when you do get the transfer of wealth, the wise stewards will be wise to how to steward the money in preparation for what's coming in the future because we're still in end times. The wealth transfer doesn't mean Christ is returning. He means he's making a way. He's the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. He's making a way. But ultimately, we're, David, Jesse, you know, we just heard the prophecy. God's about to give us the keys. The keys to what? He put the slide up. What's the key to? The key to what? The key to the kingdom to what? To open the heaven. That's the prophecy we just listened to in Clement. He said the key to David is going to do what? It's going to open the heavens. And when the heavens open, you'll get the wealth transfer. So the key to David and what did he say? Listen to the prophecy again. Resurrection. Resurrection. Resurrection's March 31st. Seven, eight days later is the eclipse. Saints, if you only know, if you only knew how an incredible time point we are living at. Oh, the prophetic word that oh, actually I got to thank you, Nathan. The prophetic word, I got to share the piece of it that we were sitting at lunch and Nathan called one of his prophets up who Nathan highly respects. And the prophetic word was this. I got to share that. Bo, you will pinch yourself in June because you won't believe what came your or our way. That's what's coming. You know, the Lord told me, he said he's unlocking um, his voice right now on the earth. Mm. He's unlocking his voice. This book, some of you have read this book. This book is 
it's not meant to be a secret. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a key um, that, that's in a lock right here on the front cover of It's Not Meant to Be a Secret. Um, and this this is one of the three book series that I am sending out to new partners. But I have to say, if you guys haven't got this book, if you haven't read this book, about halfway through this first book in the three-part series, you're going to learn to hear the voice of God very clearly. But here's what I realized. Man, this revelation, I asked the Lord one day, and it was so profound to me. Lord, why do you give me everything that I ask for? I don't understand it because my I have friends that are jealous or they get mad because they they see favor and grace and God's pouring out and his blessings on us. And, and it's a profound thing. And they're trying to figure out why is this happening for you and not us? You know what? I ask God the question because I don't know. I know I'm an imperfect, flawed guy that loves Jesus. And you know what he said to me? He said, Nathan, the reason that I give you what you ask for is because when I ask for you for something, you give it to me. He said, the reason that there's nothing that I wouldn't do for you is because there's nothing you wouldn't do for me. That Let that sink. If there's nothing that you wouldn't do for God, then there is nothing God wouldn't do for you. And my goodness, I feel like in this outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Come on. in the beginning of this Come great on. awakening that we're stepping into right now, you're going to see the Spirit of God pour out on all flesh. You're going to see Him burn up the chaff of religion. You're going to see the separation between the wheat, or the wheat and the tares, the sheep and the goats. You're going to see uh, uh, where the Lord actually starts to put things in order. It starts with the house of the Lord. The Bible says judgment begins with the house of the Lord. But the righteous king King, he's not judging to condemn, which is to tear down, as much as he's judging to evaluate what needs to be restored. God's emphasis in his grace and mercy and kindness, his goodness that leads people to repentance, his emphasis is not what's wrong with you. It's what needs to be made right with you. It's not what happened. It's what he wants to do about what happened. It's not what you went through. Mm -hmm. It's about how he prepared you. And there's so many things that God is preparing to release to the body of Christ, but he just wants us to be willing. He told me willingness is like an open sail that attracts my wind. He said, Nathan, if you're uh, fully surrendered, I'll fully surround you. He said, give me these five things. And I was listening and he said, give me surrender, sacrifice, submission, servanthood, and surrender. And he said, you give me those five things. You surrender all that you are every day. Pick up your cross, deny yourself. But if you really want to be serious, thought by thought. Think about what you're thinking about because your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your outcomes. If you don't like what you're seeing, start changing the way you're thinking by getting in the word of God and by learning to hear the voice of God. And that's the reason I write books. So you should get the series. If you haven't already, go get those series on, on my website, Nathan French Ministries. Dot com. You can pick them up. You go sign up, you partner, you get all those books sent for free. And I know you're going to hear God like never before. Um, also, check out um, Manny Johnson's ministries as well. Um, you know, Manny, what's your website? Megapraiseministries.com. Megapraiseministries.com. And go check out Bo's website. Bo, what's your website? Uh, Gold2020forecast.com. gold 2020 forecast. You know what? That's such a, it's powerful. I mean, here we're three guys that felt led by the spirit to get together, to come on this platform and to share with you some things that have worked for us. And so I hope you're inspired. I hope God's lifting the burdens, lifting the hope or the, the weights of hopelessness and bringing new hope in your spirit to just simply believe God. I mean, it's fun to believe God. It's so much fun to obey God. Like he told me to come down to California. Honestly, I was really happy being in Washington. I was doing great. I was I was doing some land development. I asked God for some heavy equipment and this guy called me on the phone and, and he says, hey Nathan, I bought you some machines. And I said, what kind of machines? I was thinking, you know, something small. He goes, well, I got you a, a giant bulldozer. It's a caterpillar. I said, you bought me a bulldozer? He's like, yeah, it's, it's got extra wide tracks with a, a with a big 13-foot wide blade. And I'm thinking, that's as long as my Denali. I mean, it's a 13-foot wide blade. And he goes, 
Oh, and I got you a, a couple of excavators. I'm like, a couple of excavators? He goes, yeah, they're the big ones. You can pull trees out from the roots. And I realized that God's saying, it, it was a prophetic thing for me. And I did ask for heavy equipment. God gave me three giant caterpillars for absolute free. Okay, so this, I, I ask God for things and he gives me the exact thing that I ask for. And usually it's exceedingly abundantly above all I can even ask or think. It's better than I think. And so I'm telling people like, ask God. You have not because you ask not. You or you ask a miss. Don't miss when you ask, but ask and believe. If you ask and you don't believe or you doubt, that causes waver and that's double minded. Don't expect to receive anything from the Lord. So learn to shut doubt out. There's no doubt about it. God wants to bless you, not just in one area, but in every area of your life. He saved it. He came just for that reason to give you and me life and life more abundantly. So the abundance is not something that should be feared or poo-pooed or said, oh, I don't know if I should be one of those people because I don't like people who get blessed. No, no, no. You are too blessed to be stressed. Start talking like that. I get blessed. When I learned this from uh, from uh, Brother um, uh, Jesse. Brother Jesse, and uh, I went out to visit them. We had dinner with Jesse and, and Cass Kathy uh, Deplanis uh, yes. a while back, and he had a visionary conference. And it to me, it was life changing because he taught me things, you know, he taught us all that, Hey, you know, you know, you need to talk right. Cause there's, there's, it's in your saying and you're believing that these great things can take place. And he said, you got to start thinking right and speaking right. And he was saying stuff. And it was so funny to me. He's pacing around. He's like, yeah, I get blessed going out, blessed coming in everywhere I go get blessed. I can't help but get blessed. Somebody said I have four jets. I ain't got four jets. I've had four jets, but I only got one. I don't know well, they got to get their back straight. And it was so funny to me. And he looks out and he sees me in the crowd, Brother Bo. And he goes, yeah. Yo, who are you? And this was before we had dinner. He goes, who are you? And I said, me? He goes, yeah, you in the green suit. I don't even like wearing suits, but I felt like God said, you need to put a green suit on. So I put on an olive green suit. And I'm, I'm a big guy. I'm like 315 pounds, 6'5". I mean, I stand out. And he pulls me out of this crowd. And he tells me to come up. He called me the Jolly Green Giant. He goes, come up here. You, you a giant of a man. He goes, you know, you're the Jolly Green Giant. That's actually a nickname my friends gave me. But anyway, he, has, he lays hands on me and he releases an impartation for a financial mantle to handle the wealth of God's kingdom. I have to tell you, Sometimes you will be in the right place at the right time because you obeyed God. I just preached across Canada. The last thing I wanted to do was go to New Orleans. I'm on my way to Seattle. And the phone call comes. This lady says, Nathan, I think you're supposed to go to New Orleans. God told me to give you my ticket to go have dinner with Jesse Duplantis at this visionary thing. And so I just went there. I didn't know who Jesse was. I listened to him after that. And I'm like, oh, he sounds like he's a brother from another mother. You know what? He's a white guy that sounds like a brother from another mother. I said, bro. Oh. I, I said, I said. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jesse is, the, is he is very funny and boy. Is it changed my life, Bo. Yeah. Dude, when he laid hands on me. I yeah, knew I could see that I would never have to worry about money again. So something about just being around people who have true biblical faith, not people who are saying and praying and spraying. I'm talking then, about. You know what he says? He goes, because when I gave myself over to God, Satan was pissed. Because, <laughs> yeah, because he's a powerful man. Because he was a really good sinner. Yeah, he was a good sinner. But, you know, God, all of a sudden he switches, you know, kingdoms from the kingdom of darkness to being right. all in yes. with the kingdom what God, of God. What evil use for bad, God's using for good. So he's got yes. the fire on him like you yes. can't even imagine. And, it's and he's, he's got so much, he's got faith. And I think, you know, so I'm not trying to raise up a man. I'm just saying, when you learn from Bo about kingdom resource and what's going on in the times and the area of the clock. And you learn from, you know, Manny, how to give God mega praise. When you learn from me, you know, um, you know, I'm telling you, there's a different flavors of people that you're meant to build your faith muscle in every category. So don't put all your eggs in one prophetic basket, but be versatile in listening for the wisdom of a multitude of counsel. Cause not all counsel is wise counsel, but you need 
need to discern, rightly dividing the word of truth, who is from God, who is not from God, whose heart is pure and whose heart is not pure. And discern by the discerning of spirits, you will know them by their fruit. That means what they produce, what their life produces. And what is happening in them is a prophetic word to what God can do for you if you'll just believe and trust him. So I, I just appreciate it so much, uh, Bo. I appreciate you know what you're doing. And I, I know you just want to see everybody get blessed. That's right. And even That's Manny, right. like and we just did a series of meetings mm -hmm. where the Holy Ghost came so strong. People were just laying out on the floor. Tomorrow, we're preaching at a big event. Where are we at tomorrow? What's we're that? We're going thing? to be at the Olympic Auditorium. Olympic Auditorium. There's about 2,000 people. And it's LA? LA. It's LA, in the city of LA, LA, which is about eight miles from my home by freeway. And I'm telling you, Join us for we this. We are taking California back for the Lord. It's called Save the, the Children. Children. Don't miss Save the Children. If you're watching this, I believe you're meant to be a part. I don't know how it works with yeah, live. Yeah, open at 1 30, goes from 2 to 4, 2 to 4 p.m. tomorrow, right? If that's yeah, what, yeah. yeah. Two so to you don't want to miss it. So I thank you. And guess what's coming up? Very soon. Yes, 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 yes. We're having one of our Sunday meetings. That's right. We want you to be a part of it. Come on. Torrance, California, March 21st, Sunday, 6 p.m. Every rose lead in there. We have a great time. We have an awesome time. We have a, a Holy Ghost time in the Lord. And people have told us they have felt the presence of the God of the Lord before they even came into the service. On the streets coming in, they were feeling the presence of the Lord. And we want you to come expecting. Nathan was with us last time. And man, I'm telling you, I, that, that church, would, listen, California's never going to be the same. You know, I can hear California, the state of California right now is echoing. <laughs> I can just hear, <laughs> you know. Glory to Bo was with us. Yes, and Sophia was with us. And we were just having a great time. And it, that's, that's what it's about. When we're just having a great time in the Lord. It's not the spirit of religion. It's the spirit of joy yeah. and the sound yeah. mind. Because, you know, I sort of, if I'm going to speak glory days, I'm going to experience glory days. And that's what I'm doing. Like Jesse Dupin says, you know, the first thing that the Lord changed when Pentecost hit was the tongue. Hello. Yeah, the My God. Yes. When you speak, listen, if you're speaking um, what is as though it is under the guise of being realistic, you may be cursing your own progress. So instead of repeating what you don't want to hear more of and rehearsing what happened to you and whose fault it is, you know, get your eyes focused back on Jesus and learn to speak according to what Jesus is saying. In the book of James, there's power in the tongue. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. So instead of speaking, well, this always happens to me, you can start saying, Father, I thank you that everywhere I go, I get blessed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. I, I keep uh, getting creative ideas. God's given me visions. He's given me dreams. He's given me inspiration, impartation, revelation for the nation. And, but and no condemnation. Like <laughs> yeah. Be careful. Do not cast a spell on yourself when you speak. Yeah. Why? Oh, that's spell good. Because what a man think it. Yes, yeah, spell in. You don't want to cast a spell. So it's what you speak will actually manifest in your life. So we have to learn to speak according to life. It's it's a challenge sometimes because self pity wants you to get people to you know validate why you got the short end of the stick. You know, there's things like rejection, fe feeling like you're going to get rejected when you're already accepted in the beloved. So recognize how demonic spirits try to influence your thinking to get to your saying. Because because when you start saying and believing, you start seeing and receiving. And so God wants you to recognize the need to begin to speak according to the word. Remember how Jesus spoke? It is written. And he always would constantly throw yourself down. Nope, for it is written. And he just, you know, this is how he battled in, in the spirit realm, the, the wiles of the devil. Even when he was tempted in the wilderness and the 40 days and 40, you know, you think about how Jesus responded in victory is he had to anchor himself in the word of his father. And he only did and said what he heard and saw his father doing and saying. So this is very important for you as a believing believer to begin to speak according to your faith instead of talking about what you're fearing. And, and you'll get into 
into a cycle where you have momentum, which is defined as the product of a body's mass, linear velocity, the speed or the force of motion. So you get into motion with God, you start flowing with God, you start growing in God, you start seeing what he said you can see. And my goodness, you start seeing what's coming in the future and then you start prophesying. There's foretelling to call forth and there's foretelling. Foretelling is different. Foretelling is talking about what hasn't happened yet. Foretelling is telling before his hand moves, beforehand. So when he gives you a revelation about what's to be, come into agreement and partnership with the word and say, yes, God, I declare this. It doesn't matter what they say. What matters is what you say. And what you're doing is way more impressive than what those folks are doing. So you just focus on Jesus. You'll be able to walk on the water, meaning you'll be able to do the impossible. And then go and follow us on Rumble. Find me on Nathan French Ministries Rumble. He's gonna be on Rumble. Um, I'm, I'm on. on I'm on. Um, you know. Yeah, Nathan, I'm on most of the platforms. What platform? For my viewers, what platform? Rumble is on? Nathan French Ministries. And just this morning, they tried to take my video down. M Manny and I had to pray because I talked about something they didn't like. Yeah. And so you know, and you don't want we, a mad green giant in your home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so anyway but the point is we are under there's a war an information mm -hmm. war that's mm -hmm. going on in the spirit realm mm -hmm. where the powers of the prince of the air is trying to stop god's narrative yeah, from going to forth sure. it's yeah, not going to work to but it's a little bit of a fight and so this morning we had to go into some warfare just to get my video yeah, back yeah. up came and up. after about 30 minutes which never happens it came back up okay. i actually said devil if you try to take down what i just spoke then you will have to repay and it's gonna be way worse for you. So I demand that my video goes forth and it doesn't return void. What God wanted said needed to be said. I actually warned Zuckernuts on uh, on Facebook. Um, I actually said, I was on Elijah streams and I said, listen to you giants in media, you giants who are leading these platforms. If you try to silence God's prophets and prophetic people that he wants to speak through, you pick a fight with the reigning champion and you will get KO'd and he will cost you millions, even tens of millions and hundreds of millions. And he is going to deal with you if you try to silence him as he wants to speak through certain people for a reason. And I, you know what happened, Bo? A prophet from down here in LA uh, called me on the phone. He said, brother Nathan, uh, you know, I only heard, you know, the other day when you said that it was going to cost the the um, Facebook um, this much money. Uh, he said, you're the only one who I heard say that and he says did you see that it happened right after you said this gonna cost millions and millions of dollars they had a major power surge on their platform that actually cost them into the tens of millions of dollars within one day when that surge came well, the you know, power of the Holy Ghost can interrupt any system any plan of the enemy but I'll tell you it cost them so much money and I all of a sudden I started noticing that my videos were getting much more traction it was getting messed with less but yeah find me on rumble nathan french ministries um and just know that there's a battle going on but we're victorious find me on uh, rumble uh, you can find my youtube channel nathan andrew french or official nathan french ministries uh, you can find our websites on there, awakentheplanet.com, uh, and, and go follow us on those different platforms. Find each of us and follow us online uh, so you can hear updates prophetically about what God's doing on the earth. And I know you'll be blessed. Yes. Let me pray. Can I yeah, just pray? Yeah, yeah we're going yeah, we're gonna, pray for them. We're going to end it right now, but praying. I didn't even know we were here for an hour and a half. Oh, my The God. Lord is just moving. <laughs> Bo, just stretch your hands out on the viewers. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Saints, we get viewers around the world, and all of them may not know Gosh. Jesus. And we're going to take this opportunity. It all bowers down. Do you know Jesus? Yeah. He can either be your judge or your savior. He paid a price he didn't owe. And we owed a debt that we could never pay. And I'm asking you today, the Lord, and I believe the Lord is stirring up the hearts of many of you. Even those that have been mad at God. C come on, come, let's come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Come on. The Lord is talking to you, lady. The Lord is talking to you, young man. 
come on right now let's let's relinquish all that root of bitterness and start forgiving and let go and let God Lord we do actually did you apply your mercy and grace on this broadcast and release an anointing it's call on his name right now I need you Jesus I need to know you I need to really know you yeah. not know of you but know you and right now if you will say yes and as my my brother Nathan said I, I, I you want to be all in all in not a fence rocker you know not you know not a toad taster in the water it all in and taste and see that the Lord is good Like I said earlier, he'll take you places you've never been. He'll tell you things you've never heard. And he'll show you things you've never seen. That's the best decision that we've ever made is to make our Lord and Savior. And if that's you right now, say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes right now. Yes, I want. I want what these what these fellows have. I want what these those on the live stream. I want it. Save me right now. This because I save me, Lord. Gosh. Right now, I can feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. Real, real quick, real, real quick, real quick, Nathan. Close it out. I just want to say, if if you jumped on late, earlier in the broadcast, I did an invitation for salvation. Some of you are questioning if you're even saved. You're wondering. I don't feel like I'm like these guys. But you're unique, you're special, and God has chosen you since the beginning. And he's calling your name. Just yield to him. Just say, Jesus, I repent. I confess all my sin. I'm asking you to wash me now. Make me a new creation. Help me live for you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I surrender completely to you. Have your way in me. I choose to make you my savior. Yes. And I ask you to wash me. Yes. Say yes. Make me new. Say yes. Heal my body. You can just say it. There's a Come healing on. virtue right now. Come People on. will be healed. Just say thank you, Jesus. By your stress yes. that I am healed. The doctor report, that curse is broken. Yes. That negative pronouncement over your body that you have this condition and that condition. We come out of agreement with that. I pray God would heal you from the effects of vaccines. I pray for a cleansing fire to come upon your bloodstream. And I command your body to be whole and healed in yes, Jesus' name. Jesus name. I say pain, get out of the body, get out of the spine, get out of the neck, come get on, out of the knee, get out yes, of the hip. Yes, Lord. Pain, get out of the organs. I command those organs to be healed. Digestive system be healed. Feet be restored. I hear the Lord saying, you are a territory taker as long as you believe so because as you thinketh you become let god target you in this transference of wealth by just simply being obedient to god by choosing that you're going to do what he says even before you've heard his voice so that your ears will be open as he continues to increase your faith and grow you in his strength I bless each one and I pray God's grace on you. I pray his favor on you. I pray for healed families, restored marriages, prodigals to come over the hill. Come on. And I pray that every single yes, person who can yes, hear Lord. this broadcast yes. right now, yes. that from this day forward, I declare and decree that you will walk in favor, grace to abound, unprecedented increase of all that is good. And I feel like there's going to be major stories that come, come from this broadcast. Yes. That you took the word of the Lord and you applied it. And that you supported the work of the ministry. And that you said yes to the will of God. Yes. And that you'll have victory. Yes. You'll have breakthrough. You'll prosper yes. in season and out of season. Yes. And the power of the prophetic has the ability to literally unlock yes. things. Lord. I prophesied over a woman who was in Saskatchewan. I said... God's telling me he's increasing you. I saw you having a bumper crop. This woman was a farmer. 
And you know what happened? We got a phone call. I don't know if it was about a month later. She yes, went Lord. and had her wheat tested as a wheat farmer. And she had four silos where they would store wheat each year after harvest. And she said that she had her wheat tested and there were shoots coming off of the wheat shoots. She said, it's very unusual. They, they go and they have their wheat tested. And they said to her, this looks like a bumper crop. How is this possible? The neighbor's seed was the same. The neighbor's yield was normal. The neighbor on the other side was normal. The, the one on the upside was normal, but her seed, her wheat was double normal. You know that she had to build three more silos for a total of seven silos because she had a bumper crop that year. How is it that none of her neighbors had a bumper crop? It was the same weather. The same pattern, the same fertilizer, the same everything that they did, always the same. And all of a sudden, because the word was spoken and she received it by faith and she partnered with the prophetic. And I'm telling you what happened. She had three more giant silos built for that wheat and they had a bumper crop that year. God can give you a bumper crop. He can cause, he can speak one word over you because of the posture of your humility and your heart being right before him that he can speak one word and all of a sudden everything changes your situation turns around the blessing of god is upon you the favor of god is upon you and you'll abound in every good work so there's, thanks for tuning in guys there's a man that's watching us and you need to hear from god he wants me to tell you my son there's nothing too hard for me there's nothing too hard for me. Whatever's going on in your living situation, it's like, I'm going to use the word, really chaotic. But the Lord says, peace be still. My son, there's nothing too hard for me. Trust him in this. Trust him in this. As I say unto one, I say unto all, you watch and you pray and you live and chase God every day. And the good news is, that's what the Bible means. That's what it stands for, good news. The good news is that the bad news didn't work out. We're going to continue this next week. We've got a lot to do. And we just speak the blessing of God on your life. Come on. We spoke about so many miracles. This podcast was truly anointed and blessed. But I'll say this, stand on the rock of Jesus. Go ahead. And when one day when we see the saints in heaven, they're going to ask us what it was like. What was it like? And we're going to say joy unspeakable. <laughs> and full of glory. We love you guys. God we bless you, guys. everybody. Bless you. Love you guys. See you soon. So much. We love you guys so Come much. Come to save the children tomorrow. It's going to be on on point. The the children shall be saved and they'll be brought out of these schools teaching demonic uh things and we're going to see the children come into uh, the fullness of who they were made to be. They have childlike faith. The Lord said, if you hurt one of them, it'd be worse to have a, a millstone tied around your neck and be thrown to the sea saying, don't mess with my kids. And that's what a lot of these people have been doing. They've been messing with our kids and we're gonna take a stand united together tomorrow at Save the Children, downtown LA. Go find out about it. We'll be there. Make we'll a French ministry in it. Go to my website, you can, you'll see yep. it. And go to NathanFrenchMinistries.com oh, yeah. yes. and check us out. We love you guys. God bless you. We'll see you soon.